Center Square Burgers and Wings, Irene's of Duet, Ritz and Grocery, and Sports Break. Now, now, here's your host, Benji Greeson, and the head coach of the Flying Fleet, Chap Boyd. Welcome into the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show. I am Benji Greeson alongside the head coach, Mr. Chap Boyd Coach. My goodness, it seems like uh, a decade has passed. I feel like it's a decade's passed. Yeah, this whole week it's has got to, to be uh, uh, revival. This whole week has got to be a, uh, a a huge weight off your shoulders just to get to game day. It's yeah, I mean just the fact that we're actually going to play uh, this weekend is, um, I mean, I. I you know, I, I, I really, I'd like to fast forward, to be honest with you. <laughs> we're, we're almost to the finish line. We need to get there and kind of get this thing going. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, it's been a long time coming. And uh, I know our, I know our players are getting excited. And, uh, and our, I know our staff is, is ready for uh, the opportunity. So, uh, Coach, uh, well, first of all, we are live here at the uh, J.P.'s Food and Spirits on the ground floor of the Belmont Inn. If you'd like to come by, we'll be here till 8 o'clock tonight. We'll also be taking your calls, uh, and that number is 262-864-0929 if you would like to jump in with us. And uh, we're going to have open phone lines here in the last segment of the show. Uh, Coach, uh, this is a... Uh, the build-up coming into this week. You you, you started this program or, or helped start this program. Uh, we're going on three years now. I'm into my third year for sure. Yeah. I <laughs> yeah. mean, you guys have yet to yeah. take a snap, and I know that's that exactly right. COVID yeah. has postponed everything this and past year. but Exactly. And, you know, because it was – what? This past fall was – the should have been our first season. Right. The previous fall would, would have been our first practice fall, and then – we would have gone into the spring, which got waylaid with all the COVID stuff. People that got sent home or whatever else. So right. there was no spring. Then we came. So we had two falls, really, is right. what we've had. Yeah. And, and then now into our third semester, really, with, with, with these players, with some of these players anyway. How fun is it going to be next week when there's actually a game to talk about? <laughs> you know, about as much fun as this one. I don't know. It's going to be close. But right now, just the fact that we have something that we can almost taste is yeah. – uh, is uh, just it's just I really can't put words into it. Um, it, it really is. It, it's going to be surreal on yeah. on, on kickoff and. Uh, but again, I, I I'd like to just fast forward. Be honest with you, get it, beat me up, Scotty, and just drop me over in uh, Wilson, North Carolina, and let's get this thing going. And so. That's it. And uh, the game is Saturday at Barton College. That's the uh, that's the first opponent there. I know you guys have had a uh, a long time of uh, of practice schedules, and I mean, I would say scouting. But the unique thing about this, this is Barton's first game as well, right? It's Barton's first game. It's our first game. I mean, kind of. I mean, you can try and do homework and figure out where the coaches came from and, and, do, and do all that stuff. But ultimately, there's going to be a lot of improvising and adjusting in yeah. that first quarter. And the, and the people that adjust fastest, best, um, assuming that the two teams are not, you know, mismatched, um, you know, who knows. But uh, it, it'll, it'll be interesting, to say the least. So. Absolutely, lots of fun. You uh, you, you got this uh, this practice season started. You guys just got to to get underway in uh, into January, right? Yep, we started practice January twenty fifth, and uh, uh, it's a great day, by the way. It's my birthday, so we <laughs> yeah. we, we had to hold off, started it right then on the twenty fifth, and uh, and then really we've pretty much been practicing except for you know like last week we're practicing, but I've never spent so much time on the hard court. I mean, I thought, uh, I mean. We were doing basketball, free, free throw shooting contests. I mean, it, it was getting old in the gym. So uh, just anything to break up the monotony of uh, no doubt. I mean, but only, rain is rain, and and of course we don't have the luxury of having you know the field turf stuff like that. So we mm -hmm. have natural grass, which it isn't holding up real well <laughs> with all this rain we're getting lately. So uh, well, well, coach, I'm sure we have a ton of uh, of alumni and fans listening. We just need to uh, get a uh, indoor practice facility <laughs> built there, and uh, we won't have to worry about this yeah, anymore. That's right? exactly right. Well, I'd settle for an outdoor one with some fake grass. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Well. Uh, 
All right, uh, so we're going to be talking uh, to Coach Boyd and also taking your calls. Again, that number, 262-864-0929, if you'd like to uh, call in and uh, wish Coach Boyd uh, luck or just ask him a question about the team and and, uh, maybe how you guys got this – uh, put all this together and got, is going to have this season started up on Saturday. Um, now Coach, I know that we will be doing uh, all the home games there from J.W. Babb Stadium. Talk a little bit about your relationship there with uh, the people there at Greenwood High. I, I, we're, we're blessed to have an opportunity to play in, in a stadium like, like Greenwood High School. Yeah. Um, Facility-wise, press box-wise, um, there's a lot of colleges that don't have – facilities like that and uh so we're, we're, we're truly blessed we're, we're looking forward to it and then when you when you add in the, the community of greenwood which can accommodate visiting teams um uh, you know parents coming in our parents coming in from distances um and then all the restaurants and things like that so i mean you know i think there'll be some spillover obviously back into the abbeville area but uh but i think it's it's a it's a pretty good mix right now as far as and it's it's proximity to the school is is really the main reason why it's uh yeah you know the leading contender right now we've had a opportunity to do a couple walkthroughs and uh test runs and whatnot and well sparky's a sparky's awesome the ad <laughs> over there is yeah. a good one so uh he's been very uh you know congenial very very helpful and uh you know I, I, I understand he's got relatives around this area too. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh, first class all the way, no doubt about it. Uh, from from top to bottom, inside and out, and that is a first class facility. So, home games are going to be uh, uh, really exciting there at, uh, at JW Babb Stadium. And I, I don't think that people really understand all the work <laughs> that has gone into uh, in just every minute detail. Uh, just to get these home games uh, off the ground, and I'm not even talking no. about team or football. Wise. No, I mean the 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 football is a small part. I mean we're going to do our thing on the football field, and that and we, of course we all think that's the most important thing in the world. But you know I like to give a shout out to my wife because without her kind of heading up all the stuff that's taking place off of the field, including this radio show. I mean she's the person that's kind of spearheaded all of this stuff, and. Right. Um, She's done a heck of a job, man. Without her, it would be <laughs> it'd be like an air squad scrimmage out there. You know, we'd be out there with our with our headsets on, talking to each other, looking at nobody in the stands, probably. But uh, you know, I, I fully expect a nice crowd to turn out over there. I do think people in the community. I think there's people that still don't even know we're playing at Greenwood High School at this point. So. Yeah. I think once the word kind of gets out, I think there's a chance that uh, there's going to be some pretty good crowds. And once COVID allows, you know, because right now we're under restrictions as far as volume of people and numbers of attendance and things like that. Yeah. Hopefully that will will lighten up a little bit. So, Uh, First home game, uh, we're two weeks away. So your first two two games of the season, they're they're not only road games, they're road games. Yeah, we're we're in (laughs) – Wilson, North Carolina, which is just past Raleigh, I guess, five hours or so. And then you've got Jacksonville, Florida. We're yeah. playing Edward Waters. And they just opened up against Jackson State this past weekend. So um, that's about a five-hour trip as well, a little over five hours. So, yeah. you know, those are those are, those are are the longest we'd like to make. Unfortunately, I'd like to sit here and tell you that th- those will definitely not be the longest <laughs> trips we will make in our career here, I'm sure. But uh, Again, any donors or boosters that are listening that so. might have a private jet. That would, uh, <laughs> you better have a lot of jets. <laughs> or a jumbo <laughs> jet. Yeah, exactly. If we got a few kids, got to go. Uh, so. that's, uh, that's good. And then the, the rest of the schedule, uh, you know, most of them are, are close. They're either home games or I think you're at North Greenville and at Newberry. That's the only other two away games in this uh, 2021 spring season. Correct. Correct. Both of them, you know, within an hour and yeah. a half or so. So of, you're in the bed that night. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, no overnights. Yeah. Coach, do you have any any pregame rituals uh, or anything that you – Not I don't want to say superstitions, but uh, is there anything that you uh, you kind of do a, a routine, maybe a schedule? You know, that's the thing. Everything is new. So. Yeah. Everything we're doing is new. I mean, trying to establish even, it's just some, some of those types of things that we would like to carry forward, those are the things we're going to be kind of trial and error. It's, it's going to be interesting. I, I, no, I don't. I, you know, as an assistant coach, I, you kind of do your own little thing. You know, you kind of yeah. whatever. I, I have no idea what the head coach is doing during, during all that stuff, to be honest with you. I guess yeah. I'll figure it out when I'm talking to the officials and all that stuff. But 
Um, so, no, I, I, I have no idea, to be honest with you, how Saturday's going to look up until kickoff. But once kickoff starts, I have a pretty good idea at, at that point. Yeah. We're going to really get into some X's and O's and uh, talk, a, uh, talk about your preparation uh, leading up to the Barton game here in just a few minutes. But I do want to remind everybody that we are at the Belmont Inn on the ground floor here at J.P.'s Food and Spirits. Now, we will be taking the uh, Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show on the road every week. We're going to be live on location somewhere. Uh, we will be at uh, Panther Square Burgers and Wings on the square here in Abbeville next week. I know we've got Irene's and Due West lined up. we got Grits and Groceries lined up. And uh, we're going to be at Sports Break in Greenwood as well. So uh, every Tuesday night from 7 until 8 o'clock you can come out and uh, and, and have, a, have a great time. Watch the show live. Of course, there's not a whole lot to look at here. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but we got a nice shiny helmet on the table. Yeah, you can come out the helmet there. Best yeah. looking helmet in the state of South Carolina. There you go. Absolutely right. Uh, so, yeah, every Tuesday night we'll be here from 7 until 8 o'clock in uh, those different locations. And, of course, uh, social media, we will be uh, all over the place there. Uh, so you can keep up with the schedule. Uh, speaking of scheduling, how different will your schedule be this fall? You're going to play 20 games in a calendar year. How different is your schedule going to be this fall versus what you're doing this spring? A lot of some duplicates from the spring. And then we bring in some people like Savannah State, people along those lines. So, I mean, there's going to be a, a different flavor, similar, but then you're going to have a few other outliers that are that are not necessarily going to be on there every year. Right. Um, the first couple of years, the schedule, making the schedule is tough. Right now, we're not in a conference. We're, we're trying to get that thing going, and, and at some point, we will be in one. Mm -hmm. I think it's more likely you'll see us having a scheduling alliance with somebody in the hopefully in the near very near future. Um, and maybe that will even be announced at some point this spring before we even get through, um, which will make scheduling much easier. Right. And, and, and really, that it's all about scheduling, and then it's all about travel. I mean, yeah. you, depending on the league you end up in, you may be traveling. You know, There's leagues where we could be playing up in Cincinnati yeah. or Cleveland, Ohio, or places like that, which I got news for you. <laughs> I'd really rather not be playing up in <laughs> Cleveland, Ohio in November, that's for sure. Right. So, uh, but uh, anyway, it, it, those are all things that are going to be determined coming forward in the next few months, hopefully. So. Okay, good deal. So we'll be uh, waiting for an announcement on the official fall schedule for uh, the Flying Fleet coming up uh, here in a couple months. Uh, Coach, we are going to jump out, and uh, we're going to take our first break of the night, just, uh, just a few minutes here, and then we're going to have uh, Hope in with us and uh, she's going to be talking about a lot of uh, festivities we've got going on there at Erskine. You know, a lot going on yeah. and uh, very thankful for it. So Absolutely. Alright, you're listening to the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show right here on WZLA 92.9 FM and streaming worldwide at WZLARadio.com Sports Break, the best meat and veggies in Greenwood. Served fresh Sunday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And don't forget about their great live entertainment every Friday from 7 until 10. Hey, Fleet fans, bring in your ticket on game day and get 10% off your bill. That's right, 10% off your entire bill. That's Sports Break, 114 Cross Creek Connector in Greenwood. A break above the rest for all your games and good times. It's Sports Break. Flying Fleet football players know a thing or two about Irene's of Due West. After all, it's right in the middle of campus. And if you want to find great food, just follow the offensive linemen. Irene's of Due West has the best pizza, wings, hot oven subs, seafood, pasta, and bluebell ice cream. Irene's has indoor and outdoor seating, and they're open seven days a week at 11 a.m. For takeout, call 864-379-2850. Go Fleet from Irene's of Due West. J.P.'s Food and Spirits on the ground floor of the historic Belmont Inn is open Tuesday through Saturday from 5 until 9 p.m. for your dining pleasures. Enjoy their incredible appetizers and mouth-watering entrees prepared fresh to order by the highly skilled Belmont chefs. And J.P.'s always has the perfect drink selection to quench your thirst. This is J.P.'s Food and Spirits, a proud sponsor of the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show. 
Grits and Groceries is a proud supporter of Erskine College football. Go to gritsandgroceries.com to see their full menu. They're open Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And Thursdays, they're open for supper from 5 until 9 p.m. Go to gritsandgroceries.com and you'll see their full concert and special events calendar, as well as all of their catering information. Grits and Groceries, 2440 Due West Highway in Belton. Go Fleet! Welcome back to the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show. We are broadcasting live from the ground floor of the Belmont Inn. It's at JP's Food and Spirits here on the square, downtown Abbeville, South Carolina. And uh, could not be more excited to get this first show underway. And uh, we'll be here every Tuesday uh, from 7 until 8 o'clock with the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show with Coach Shap Boyd. We will be taking calls with Coach Boyd coming up at uh, 7.30. So about 7.30, you can call in and uh, get on air and uh, talk to Coach Boyd, ask him questions, or uh, just tell him good luck as uh, they move forward with their very first game, first game in 70 years for the Flying Fleet. Last uh, football game played there was 1951. So an exciting season uh, about to get underway here for the Fleet. Right now, I have joining me... Hope Seymour, and uh, Hope, welcome. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, what is your title with Erskine? I am the coordinator of alumni relations. That is a long title. It is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, you are uh, you are tasked, I guess, uh, would be uh, the correct term for it there, and you're putting together homecoming, which is a really big deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, every, every college has a, has a great homecoming, and Erskine's no different. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, all the work that went in uh, to trying to get everything planned up here for homecoming this year. Yeah, it's been it's been a lot, I'm not going to lie, yeah. uh, especially with the pandemic. Um, but just a lot of twists and turns just going on with the, with the ride. Um, I think the ch schedule changes very frequently. Yeah. But just keeping up with that, it's a lot of fun. So, so, so normally when, when school goes in session, you'll see homecoming October, end of October, maybe early November, something like that. But is it is it different this year because of the pandemic and, and we're moving it to spring, right? Yeah, absolutely. So last March we had to postpone alumni weekend, okay. which is usually in March. And then we were gears ready for October for homecoming, and then we had to postpone that because of the pandemic. So this year in March, we're doing homecoming and alumni day combined. Oh, wow. So, yeah, a little yeah. something extra for the plate there. <laughs> Why right? not? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we've, we've got a big homecoming festivities uh, starting up, and uh, this is going to start into March, right? Yeah, March 26th and 27th. Okay. So. Good deal. And uh, what all will be uh, what all will be involved in those days? So on March 26th, we have the Erskine Open, and that is our golf tournament. And registration for that will begin at 9 a.m. But you can also register ahead of time online. Um, we have links to that all on our website. We have a jazz band concert that'll be at 4 p.m. on the mall. We have. The now, Darwin do you play any instruments? Um, no. Or you're not in the jazz band. I can clap really well. <laughs> <laughs> on time. No. <laughs> I almost gave you a job. But I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> nope, not my, not my not forte. Not your thing. All right. So uh, some very talented jazz musicians will be on stage, right? Absolutely. And yeah. I will be far away. So <laughs> we're safe there. And that will be taking place at the, uh, at the Bowie Art Center? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. All on campus. We're trying to do our best to have things on campus as well as in Greenwood for the football game. So I'm really right. excited about that. Mm hmm um, we'll also have the Darlington Cup debate, which is a debate with students, um, and that will also be on the 26th. Um, and registration for that is also online. And then 27th is game day, but prior to the game we'll have our alumni association meeting where we'll hand out our awards for the 2020 award winners for alumni and 2021. Um, so it'll be a big meeting, and I'm really excited about it. I think it'll be great. That sounds like a blast, an uh, <laughs> absolute blast. Uh, and that is the big game against uh, Edward Waters there at Greenwood High on the 27th that day. So combining all that is going to be so that's going to be a fun day. It's going to be a blast. I'm really excited. We have giveaways and a lot of new things to try out for alumni. So I think it'll be great. 
Um, normally, the uh, t- tell me, you mentioned that you can register on the website. Mm-hmm. Is, that's erskine.edu? Erskine.edu backslash homecoming. Okay. And it'll have all the information there. People can register up, no problem. Absolutely. And it's super easy, so you shouldn't have to worry about getting lost. <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, you say on March 27th, that is uh, Alumni Day, and uh, but there's so much going on other than just football that day. Absolutely. We have, like I said, our Alumni Association meeting. We have women's tennis also playing. We have women's lacrosse. Um, and after the football game, we are giving a complimentary dinner back on campus so hopefully everyone will come back for that free food free food well count me in <laughs> sold i'm there <laughs> come I'm, on i am completely there we'll have you all right uh yeah huge day so that's march 26th and 27th homecoming and uh and the alumni uh day there uh now i don't know if you know all the details i'm, I'm throwing you a curveball here oh no <laughs> uh fleet week is coming up right yeah now how, how fun is that gonna be that's going to be so fun yeah yeah beth has done a great job with planning it um, and so there are so many different aspects and different things moving with it but I can't express how fun and just exciting that'll be it'll bring a breath of fresh air to campus yeah so, so uh, that, that is the week before the first home game yeah the which, week of the 13th yeah the week of the 13th the 13th is the first home game there at uh, JW Babb Stadium uh, and um, it will be a full week of activities, uh, fun parades, bonfire. I mean, what have I left out? <laughs> we have movie night. We have trivia nights. We have um, just a bunch of different things for community, faculty, staff, and students. Yeah. Um, and there should be information going out about that if it hasn't already. And I'll tell you who can come to what. Yeah. So. So uh, they're really, it seems like they're really trying to uh, embrace the entire community here, right? Absolutely. Erskine's just a special place with that. We're so community-oriented. <laughs> um, so bringing in the community is just... I'm not sure uh, if people haven't uh, just just rode through campus lately. The place is beautiful. It's stunning, especially it, in the fall. It really is. Yeah. It is. Uh, uh, the, the lawns are perfect. The big, huge buildings, and the, I mean, it's, it's, it's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful campus. And uh, uh, I encourage everybody, especially on Fleet Week, when the, when the community is invited out and the, and the big parade they're going to do the, the Friday before the first home game, that will be a, uh, that'll be a fun, fun time uh, there on the campus at Erskine. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Hope, tell me a little bit about these uh, virtual museum tours that, uh, that, that I'm hearing about. Yeah, so we really want to take into consideration the people who may not want to come out because of COVID. Um, So we're offering different types of tours. They're they're all on the website, museum, planetarium, art museums, all sorts of fun things that you can do with your family um, and kind of be a part of homecoming without coming into contact with a lot of people if that's what you're worried about. Right, right. Uh, Virtual board games? Absolutely. Yeah. You got a little bit of everything here, right? Yep. We'll have trivia also going on throughout the day, and those links will be coming. Um, so you can play with alumni from wherever you're at. That's so really, really cool. Fun. That's a great way for uh, you know uh, people in the area to connect with alumni, maybe all over the world. Absolutely. You know? uh, very, Absolutely. very cool. And the uh, the virtual service opportunities. Yeah. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Erskine's really service oriented. Um, so we have charity miles that link up. So you'd basically just walk in certain miles, however many you walk, they'll donate to you whatever charity you prefer. Um, so just things like that are really interesting and I think really unique to Erskine. Very cool. Very cool. Hope you have uh, had your hands full. Absolutely. <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> uh, you have absolutely had your hands full and uh, you're doing a great job. And congratulations on all these great events that are finally, feels like we're finally getting a little bit. A little bit of normalcy back, right? I know. I'm really excited about it. <laughs> so am I. So am I. So, uh, again, just uh, re- let's reiterate one more time. Uh, homecoming March 26th. And 27th. And 27th. So cool. Hope to see more. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. We'll jump out, take a quick break. When we come back, Coach Boyd will be back on with us, and we'll be taking your calls right here on the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show. Ground floor of the historic Belmont Inn is open Tuesday through Saturday from 5 until 9 p.m. for your dining pleasures. 
Enjoy their incredible appetizers and mouth-watering entrees prepared fresh to order by the highly skilled Belmont chefs. And J.P.'s always has the perfect drink selection to quench your thirst. This J.P.'s Food and Spirits, a proud sponsor of the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show. Sports Break, the best meat and veggies in Greenwood. Served fresh Sunday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And don't forget about their great live entertainment every Friday from 7 until 10. Hey, Fleet fans, bring in your ticket on game day and get 10% off your bill. That's right, 10% off your entire bill. That's Sports Break, 114 Cross Creek Connector in Greenwood. A break above the rest for all your games and good times. It's Sports Break. Flying Fleet football players know a thing or two about Irene's of Due West. After all, it's right in the middle of campus. And if you want to find great food, just follow the offensive linemen. Irene's of Due West has the best pizza, wings, hot oven subs, seafood, pasta, and bluebell ice cream. Irene's has indoor and outdoor seating, and they're open seven days a week at 11 a.m. For takeout, call 864-379-2850. Go Fleet from Irene's of Due West. Grits and Groceries is a proud supporter of Erskine College Football. Go to gritsandgroceries.com to see their full menu. They're open Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And Thursdays, they're open for supper from 5 until 9 p.m. Go to gritsandgroceries.com and you'll see their full concert and special events calendar, as well as all of their catering information. Grits and Groceries. 2440 Due West Highway in Belton. Go Fleet! And welcome back to the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show right here on WZLA 92.9 FM and streaming worldwide at WZLARadio.com. I am Benji Greason here with the head coach of the Flying Fleet, Mr. Shap Boyd. Coach Boyd, uh, I tell you, this is uh, uh, this part of, uh, of game week has got to be absolutely stressful, nerve-wracking, uh, the weight of the world. I mean, uh, going in a million different directions. Uh, how do you how do you cope? <laughs> you know, I mean, to be honest with you, this week is better than most weeks because we've been doing this for so long. We can only what if just so much. I mean, and we don't have a lot of information. You know, they don't have a lot of information on us. Right. So, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, if, if we had three game films or five game films and we had all that time, it would be what if and until the cows come home, and then you're always worrying about the next thing. Right. To be honest with you, we can only do what we can do. You know, yeah. we're, we're working on it. We've practiced. We, we, we throw certain things at them. And there's some things that are definitely going to go sideways on Saturday. Yeah. And it's going to end up being which team responds the right way. Is that, uh, is that part of the, uh, of the speech, I guess, is how to uh, kind of absorb the, uh, um, the, the negative th uh, aspect of it and, and, and just move forward? That's part of it, there's no doubt. Because, I mean, ultimately, like I said, it, both teams are going to make mistakes. The team that can make fewer mistakes or the team that can, can eliminate you know, have, have have fewer missed assignments, I guess I would say. Right. Um, who's going to have a better chance to, to be successful. Um, and, yes, we, we're, we're talking about that. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let them off the hook. I'm going to tell them they're going to make a mistake. Yeah. Y'all going to mess some stuff up. We're, <laughs> right. we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do some things that we've never done before. Yeah. We're going to shake our head. And you know what? But we got to come back out the next series. We've got to come back out the next play. We've got to come back out and do the – and, and then that's always the next thing, short-term memory. Right. And, and so we preach it. and But preaching it in practice is very different than getting it done on a game. Yeah. So we're going to find out a lot about these kids. Let's talk about these kids for a moment, Coach. Uh, uh, college uh, football, obviously, a lot different from high school football, where as you go out and you recruit – and uh, I know that your staff is assigned to certain areas around the southeast, and uh, and you recruit a certain area as well. What kind of kid are you looking for to come to Erskine? Who, the ideal fleet man, who is that? The, the ideal fleet man, first and foremost, isn't afraid to 
be around a Christian environment. I mean, that's what we are. We're Christ-centered. So we're looking for someone, not that they necessarily are, but they have to be receptive to it because right. it's, they're going to be immersed in it a little right. bit. I mean, we're going to talk about it. It's going to be part of what we do, and we're not going to shy away from that. After we get past that, we're looking for somebody that wants to be great, and, and I preach that almost daily. I mean, we're not trying to be good. We don't want to be good. We want to be great. Mm-hmm. You know, good is the enemy of great. Right. There's a lot of people that settle for being good, and I think a lot of times we have to end up kind of trying to push our kids beyond what they what they think they can do. I, 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 it's not that they don't want to be great, but I don't know if they all know necessarily what it takes to be great. Yeah. You know, they they think they're working hard, but ultimately when you when you're bringing a hundred and 50 kids together from 150 different schools or whatever it is there's a melting pot that's that's going on and and, and they got to get used to each other and some of those programs are a little a little more fine-tuned than some of those other some of those programs are not quite as fine-tuned so i mean you're kind of mixing some kids that came from programs that were were dialed in and then you got some kids that kind of ran the program so yeah Ultimately, there's a, there's a you know, and, and we need the kids that, that know how to get it done to, to kind of teach the ones that don't know how to get it done. Leadership. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and, and really, that's going to be interesting to see who the real leaders will be on Saturday. It's not like you have a bunch of fifth-year seniors. No. We, we, we truly have freshmen and redshirt freshmen. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see. You know, there's probably some kids that we think are leaders that we won't be able to find on Saturday. <laughs> and then there's going to be some other guys that, that just like kind of step up and thrive yeah. in that setting. Yeah. And Where did you come from? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where was this all <laughs> the last two years? Right. You know, they just needed a, you know, and you know how that is. Some kids are better under pressure. Yeah. Some kids aren't practice players. <laughs> you know, that's the deal. Coach, let's take our first call for the night, and uh, we'll go over uh, to the hotline here. Go ahead, caller. You are on the air. Thank you very much, Benji. I appreciate you taking my call. Absolutely. Chap, Chap, you and Beth are doing a great, great, great service, and you're really working hard doing this. And I uh, wish I could do the, that uh, JP's at Belmont in with you guys. But i got a couple of questions. How do the receivers, how are you coaching those guys? Uh, what do you think is going to be the strongest part of your game? Well, I mean, I'm not going to um, – if, if I have to say that what, which area of our football team would be our strongest right now, I would tell you that our receivers are probably the, the, the most talented. Um, we've got some kids there that, that have talent that, that are gifted, um, and they're going to have to be, I mean, to be quite honest with you. Uh, they're going to have to make some plays. Um, and, you know, it's been good for our defensive backs because our defensive backs, I think, are getting better. And I've looked at my DBs and I say, fellas, you're not going to go against a lot of guys that are going to be necessarily – you're going to go against one receiver or a receiver that might be better than anyone we have. But when you put our core of receivers out there, they can put three or four out there that are pretty good. Yeah. And they're gonna, not every team can do that. I mean, they may have one or two, but not every team's got – Whatever. I, I think we, we truly have now. We're still recruiting. We're still going to go out and do what we got to do. But, but, it, but if you're looking at, at where our talent lies right now, that I would say that, you know, on either side of the ball, up with the wide receivers, that's probably would be the, the strongest group right now. Okay. Well, that's good to know. That's good to know. Well, you're going to make everybody great, and you're going to definitely uh, move them up. I like your comment on uh, the mental aspect of players. You know, uh, you know, mentally, I'm sure you will make them move up and uh, realize how good they are. Well, that's, I mean, the thing I was telling them the other day is that, you know, you decide what you're going to do, but you, will, your body will do nothing until you've decided you're going to do it. So they have to make the decision that, that they're going to fight through things. You know, and we talk about just life. I mean, there's decisions that I make that I predetermine. I predetermine how I'm going to act when I'm put in certain situations so that when I'm in those situations, I've already made the decision. I already know how I'm going to act. And they almost got to do the same thing as an athlete. They're going to be put in situations. They need to already have a plan. They need to have an action plan ready to go. And hopefully our guys are doing that. And, um, you know, so but, but it's going to be telling. It's going to be interesting because I think – there's going to be a lot of growing up that has to take place. We're going to have, we got some very good players, 
but they still need to grow. Mm-hmm. And we're going to find out just how much this Saturday. Excellent. Excellent. Benji, thank you for your show, Chap. We look forward to your success. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you for the kind words. Thanks for calling. Absolutely. Be safe. All right. Bye-bye. So, yeah, there uh, – I hate to be cliche here, but uh, as you were talking about a minute ago with uh, with the receivers and, and the DBs, iron sharpens iron. And, There's no doubt. And, and when you've got the, a group uh, of guys that are just a little step better, a little step faster, maybe the guys that are covering them, they're going to have to uh, they're going to have to match that, match that intensity and that athleticism. There, there's no doubt. And to be honest with you, because I'm I'm kind of a I call it, I kind of call it as I see it. I don't really mince my words out there on the field, and. If I'm the receivers, I'm getting mad at the DBs at times. It's like, come on, you can cover me better than that. Right. I need to get better. I need more work. Yeah. And you know what? I think our, our, the defensive guys have gotten a lot better because they go against good every day. Right. So now, don't get me wrong. Our receivers can get better. <laughs> they, they definitely can get better. But, again, when you're looking at a group of freshmen, redshirt freshmen, they were the, they were the kind of the cream of the crop as far as our group is concerned, um, and if they stay the course and they have that they stay and, and they work like they should under Coach Hayes's leadership and, and Coach Green's leadership with the uh, with the receivers, you know they're they're going to be they have a chance to be be good, be yeah. real good. Uh, Coach Shat Boyd here with us on the uh, inaugural edition of the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show. If you'd like to call in and talk to Coach Boyd, you can do that right now. Phone lines are open, 262-864-0929. That number again, 262-864-0929. We'll uh, be here at the uh, Belmont Inn on the ground floor at JP's Food and Spirits until 8 o'clock tonight, so about 20 minutes left in the show. Um, Coach, you, you jumped out and said that you thought that your, uh, your your wide receivers might be the best position group. I had a had a chance to talk to your uh, office coordinator, uh, Coach Hayes, um, a week or two ago, and uh, he pointed to the defensive line and said that he thought that the D line might be one of the better position groups. Uh, Let me give you a little bit of inside <laughs> scoop there. He, he lives with a D line coach, so you know whatever. <laughs> now. Don't get me wrong. He, he's right. The D line. The D line has been. The D line has come a long way. Yeah. Um, to, to say they're all young is kind of redundant. But I mean, in, in, they're growing up. Mm-hmm. They're growing up. Um, and, and really, the, the biggest thing that we've tried to get in practice is compete. Just compete. Yeah. Because some again, some of these kids come from programs where they had to compete every day just to play. Right. These other kids came from programs where there was no one that competed with them. They just showed up and got to play. Physical ability, they were the best when they stepped Correct. on the field. Yeah. So their mindset's different than this. And that doesn't mean the talent level's different, but the way they approach things is different. Mm-hmm. And so when you start mixing that in, 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 in that one, the kid that's used to grinding versus the kid that's not used to it, the kid that's not used to it's got to grow. He's got to learn that, you know, defeat's, defeat's not final. Right. I mean, life isn't built on successes. Right. I mean, I don't know anyone that wins at everything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as a matter of fact, most of us lose at a lot of stuff, and, 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 and we basically learn and we move forward. Right. And we learn and we move forward. So it's more about we, we, we take a lot more. I mean, as a coach, I take a lot more away from a loss than I do from a win. Why? Because I analyze it a heck of a lot harder than I do the win. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I mean, we should probably do the both. But we don't as coaches. I'm not sure I've ever met a coach uh, that uh, did not hate losing more than they like winning. Is that a fair way to say it? It's so – talk about cliche. But but that is so well said. I mean, ultimately, you know, when I win, that's a – that, you know, a few minutes, you know, an evening. Pat on the back. We're done with – I'm done with that. I'm done with that. A loss? You're, you're 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 running that thing through your head for days. Yeah. That that it doesn't that you don't get rid of that until you play that next game and have a chance to erase the stink, right. so to speak. <laughs> so I mean, ultimately, it's you know definitely you you, you and, but you need players that hate to lose right. more than they like to win. I mean, it's not about the winning. Yeah. You better hate to lose because if you hate to lose. You, you'll take you'll go to the necessary steps so that you don't put yourself in that position. Right. Um, I, I've had the opportunity to come to a, to a practice, and, and one thing that I can say is, you preach and 
breed competitiveness, if I'm saying that right. The uh, uh, the, the tug of war, the towel game. Uh, you know, uh, these guys. I mean, you you, you explain this. You you've got offense on one side, you got defense on one side. You call out a couple guys, well, you throw them a towel, and, and well, you know, it was just basically dogging a bone. I mean, you're trying to pull the towel. You yeah. know, just taking the towel, taping it up so where the towel's three feet long, and, and basically tug of war. Yeah. It's a small tug of war, and there's no and no rules. No rules. Bob, they're wearing their helmets. They're wearing their shoulder pads. Yeah. I think we had a concussion in that drill. We've had some injuries <laughs> in the drill. But, you know, again, it was it was more or less just, you know, kids compete. Mm-hmm. Compete. I mean, you know, ultimately concussions and things like that are part of football anymore. Um, but this headgear and th- these things that we wear nowadays are so much better than what they, you know. Yeah. I mean, when I started playing Pop Warner, it was like a suspension helmet. I mean, <laughs> I mean those things probably outlawed by now. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, you know, so now they got all, you know, th- this helmet right, that's the one sitting on the table right here, is the one you're seeing all the NFL guys wearing now. I mean, it, yeah. it's, if you're going to get hit, that's a good helmet to have on. Yeah. And, uh, and a lot of our kids are wearing it. So, uh, but, uh, you know, so we're competing. And, and again, it's, it's not about losing. See, the kids have got to get over the fear of losing. They're, 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 they feel like if they lose, it's an embarrassment. Well, guess what? You're going to be embarrassed. Okay? You're going to yeah. be embarrassed in life. We're all embarrassed in life. But we're going to hopefully try and lose a lot more than we, than we, than we win. We're trying to get our kids to get over the embarrassment part. Right. You, you know, you're going to lose. You're going to lose. You gotta get, get past it. What's your? How are you gonna respond to the loss? Exactly. That's really the issue. Yeah. You know, it's not how many times you get knocked down. It's how many times you get up that really matters. Right. So, and, and, if, and the guy that gets up one more time than the other guy, he's gonna he's gonna be the guy that's on standing on top. You know, I think when when we're sitting on our couch and we're comfortable and we're you know have our cold drink in our hand and our popcorn and the 65 inch uh, you know flat screen on the wall there and, and you're watching football and and you can watch it all day long, you don't really realize. You gotta have dog in you to be out there on that field, right? I mean, <laughs> that's exactly what you gotta have. You gotta have dog. Yeah. You gotta have dog in you, and 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 that's kind of what we're looking for. We're looking for guys that have dog in them, and, and and I don't mean like guys in the trenches. I mean, you can have a quarterback that's got dog in. Absolutely. I mean, you think Tom Brady don't have dog in? Exactly him? right. I mean, Tom Brady, he's, he's marching up and down the field. He's telling he's telling the water boy what to be doing. I mean, right. there it's it's just it's a it's an attitude. Mm-hmm. It's a mindset. Yeah. And, and champions have the, mar- the right mindset. And what we're trying to do is get enough kids that have a mindset that's moving in the, in the right direction. Right. Um, and, and if one, if and when, now not if, but when we get enough of that happening, then that's when you're going to start getting some momentum. Right. And, you know, right now, you know, we need a game. Yeah. I mean, we need a game. We need a barometer. Mm-hmm. You know, we need a game where we can kind of figure out where things are. So, and our kids need to know where things are yeah. so that we can kind of take the next step. Um, you can watch them practice, and you can, you know, obviously you know talent when it jumps out at you. You can watch them practice. But until there's somebody on the other side wearing a different color helmet, jersey, whatever, and you're getting punched in the mouth, eh, you know, the things change a little bit sometimes. There's no doubt. I, I might have used that being punched in the mouth phrase <laughs> a couple times this week. But – I mean, ultimately, that's what's fixing to happen, and I've told our team that. That's, that's what's fixing to happen. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, there's only one game on their schedule that they're looking to at this point saying, hey, this is a W for us, and that's us, because we're a startup just like they are. Yeah. So they got to be saying, hey, this is, the, this is the, the best opportunity we have for a win, just like we are. Right. You know, so, Absolutely. I mean, everybody else we're playing has been playing football for 100 years. Well, man, uh, Coach, you, you got me fired up. I, uh, <laughs> uh, the uh, the game with Barton this Saturday, uh, 4 o'clock kickoff there? 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock, two o'clock kickoff. Thank God. I won't be, that means we're going to be rolling back in here at 2 in the morning. So. <laughs> and uh, so that will get underway. Now, uh, I think there is a way through Barton's website maybe that people can uh, listen think, or watch that game. I think they have simulcast that the, how they would do that. Right. If you went to Barton, bartoncollege.edu, you probably can find something on their sports Google site as far as Google it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll just you, they, they should have some kind of a live stream of the game. That you know, you're not going to hear Benji's voice on there. It won't be quite as entertaining, but well, 
you know, we will uh, we'll be there for all the home games this year, <laughs> and uh, and really looking forward yeah. to that. And so. then maybe somewhere down the line we get you to go to all the games. There we go. There we go. So, well, coach, let, let's uh, let's jump out. We'll take our last break of the show here, and uh, when we come back, I want to get into some details about about the guys on your team here. We'll talk offense. We'll talk defense. I don't know if you have a too deep set yet or not. We'll talk about that if you do and you don't, how people can get tickets maybe. And also, we'll still be taking your phone calls right here, right here on the very first edition of the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show. We'll be right back. J.P.'s Food and Spirits on the ground floor of the historic Belmont Inn is open Tuesday through Saturday from 5 until 9 p.m. for your dining pleasures. Enjoy their incredible appetizers and mouth-watering entrees prepared fresh to order by the highly skilled Belmont chefs. And J.P.'s always has the perfect drink selection to quench your thirst. This is J.P.'s Food and Spirits, a proud sponsor of the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show. Flying Fleet football players know a thing or two about Irene's of Due West. After all, it's right in the middle of campus. And if you want to find great food, just follow the offensive linemen. Irene's of Due West has the best pizza, wings, hot oven subs, seafood, pasta, and bluebell ice cream. Irene's has indoor and outdoor seating, and they're open seven days a week at 11 a.m. For takeout, call 864-379-2850. Go Fleet from Irene's of Due West. Grits and Groceries is a proud supporter of Erskine College Football. Go to gritsandgroceries.com to see their full menu. They're open Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And Thursdays, they're open for supper from 5 until 9 p.m. Go to gritsandgroceries.com and you'll see their full concert and special events calendar, as well as all of their catering information. Grits and Groceries. 2440 Due West Highway in Belton. Go Fleet! Sports Break, the best meat and veggies in Greenwood. Served fresh Sunday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And don't forget about their great live entertainment every Friday from 7 until 10. Hey, Fleet fans, bring in your ticket on game day and get 10% off your bill. That's right, 10% off your entire bill. That's Sports Break. 114 Cross Creek Connector in Greenwood. A break above the rest. For all your games and good times, it's Sports Break. Welcome back to the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show right here on WZLA 92.9 FM and streaming worldwide at WZLARadio.com. I'm Benji Greason alongside the head coach of the Flying Fleet, Coach Shap Boyd. Uh, this uh, show will also be archived on WZLARadio.com. And on Saturday at noon, you can watch it on WCTEL uh, Television Channel 20. Uh, the replay of this show right here. we got a man, Mr. Andrew, over there, uh, uh, video and the whole thing. Have you smiled at the camera yet? Because I forgot. Yeah, I there. forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. I was just telling somebody over there, I was made for radio. <laughs> I mean, anyone could be made for radio. It's right? a television thing that you got to watch out for. That's so. the part you hope the good Lord gives you. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Well, if you'd like to call in here, 262-864-0929, 262-864-0929. Zero nine two nine. You can call in, talk to Coach Boyd, and uh, wish him well, and ask him some questions if you like. As uh, they get ready to take on Barton College uh, this coming Saturday, the first football game in 70 years for Erskine College. We thought it was going to be 60, 69, 69 years, but <laughs> exactly. you know uh, there was a pandemic that happened there. But uh, nevertheless, uh, we are. Um, uh, just days away. Coach, we've got a call. Let's uh, go over here. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Hi, uh, Kevin Singles here calling. Uh, and uh, I'm just so excited about your upcoming uh, football season. You know, after Super Bowl, I go into uh, like a football depression. <laughs> Same. We all do. And uh, yeah, I was so excited. Uh, I, I looked for your opener uh, uh, last fall. And uh, I'm looking so far looking for your games. I wish you well. 
and uh, I'm going to fly up there on the on the uh, 12th for the game at the, on the 13th. And I uh, just wanted to wish you guys well and uh, God's blessings up there. And I uh, hope everybody stays safe. And I want to see a lot of W's this year. <laughs> well, I appreciate <laughs> We 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 could play on that one, and uh, you know, I, I, where are you flying up from? Well, I'm in Benita Springs right now. Okay. In Florida. Okay. And uh, I'm I'm stopping there, and I'm going to Grand, my home in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Oh, okay. And I'm flying back down, so. We got offensive line coaches from Michigan. He's a, yeah, I know him really well. Oh, is this uh, – you paying your folks to call in here, Drew? <laughs> awesome. That is awesome. I look, forward, I look forward to meeting you, actually. You and I need to have a long talk. Yeah. No, it's really – I'm so excited. I think this spring ball is a great idea. Uh, well, you know what? I would have said that before I'd gone through this spring ball, but I tell you what, this weather around here right now, now it's bad everywhere, but this weather has been horrendous. Yeah. And uh, – you know, I, I mean, you can have spring football, but I got to deal with that one. I mean, you know, January, February is a wash. Hey, baseball, yeah. I'll tell you what, you guys can have spring. Give us the fall. We'll take the fall. <laughs> I don't give a rip about this spring baseball f- football thing. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> well, thank you for calling, and uh, look, look forward to, uh, to seeing the first game in a couple weeks. All right, great. Yeah, I look Thanks forward to meeting you. Forward. Thank you for calling. Look forward to meeting everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. That's awesome. That's uh, that's our offensive line coach's uh, father. And yeah. uh, then the other gentleman that called in was a, an alum that I had a chance to meet last spring, that uh, super guy, Walker, the super guy. And uh, so, um, you know, haven't been burning up the lines tonight, Benji, but, hey, <laughs> the, the calls have been at least, uh, you know, some class acts and some awesome people. They've so. been cordial. They have been cordial. So uh, we'll see how that goes throughout the season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Two six two eight six four zero nine two nine is the number if you want to chime in with us here. Two six two eight six four zero nine two nine. We've got about eight minutes left here with uh, with Coach Boyd. So if you want to call in and wish him well, or if you'd uh, like to call and ask a couple questions, like I said, we've got about eight minutes left in the inaugural Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show. Coach, uh, uh, like I said, you're four days away. Uh, do you guys, do y'all, y'all have a starting 11 on, on either side yet? We do. Um, you know, we've, we've got, I mean, the thing that I'm telling our guys right now is that we do, but everything's fluid. Yeah. What, what they're used to coming out of high school is you, you set a, a, a group of kids and, 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 and short of injury or whatever, that, that's, that 11 or whatever it is pretty much stays the same in, in most right. cases. College is not the same. College, the expectation is, is what have you done for me lately? Mm-hmm. So you, you have to perform on a weekly basis. So the one deep is a little bit different in college than it is, in, I think, in, in, in high school. For us, we really need to be too deep. You want to have that interchange. We really need right? to be too deep, and, you know, and, and maybe not on the offensive line or in certain places. There may be places where they don't they don't necessarily play. But most coaches, if they're given a choice, would like to play two D. Right. You know, we don't want to play one group and just leave them out there. Yeah. Because we want the kids that are out there to be fresh and to be going, you know. Yeah. Your tongue's dragging in the third uh, quarter if you know correct. you're only playing twenty two guys and there. So ultimately we're playing as many as we can but again, we're we're growing some kids up, and some of these kids have have got to get ready to play. Yeah, um, you need to earn the right to play at this point. And you know the uh, the one position that uh, gets all the love and uh, and all the blame is uh, is your quarterback coach. Have uh, have you guys named a starting quarterback? Yeah. You know they're running two coach. They're running two of them in in the one slot. Last I was, you know, because currently I'm I'm the defense coordinator, so. But they're running two in the um, the number one slot, so they're kind of rotating, you know, a couple of different kids there. Um, has one step forward and solidified things, to my knowledge. That hasn't been the case, but um, you know, is that, that the plan on game day? Are you going to run interchangeable on game day? I wouldn't say interchangeable. I think they have you know different things in mind for for the two, for the different kids, different packages um, for each guy, and. I wouldn't say that uh, it's co- it's not a completely different package, but I do think that certain kids do certain things better. Right. So, you know, obviously they would focus on certain things. I do know this, they'll both play. Yeah. Um, you know, and 
that's just something. And, and, and at some point, somebody may, may separate himself, and that's kind of what you hope. You kind of hope that, that someone separates so you have a guy and then you have a, a capable other person that can that can get some reps because you got you one you one play away from being in right. So when you're yeah. a two, you one play away, and so your two has to be able to play. Um, so ultimately, that's kind of where they are right now. And again, it's a lot different in practice. We're gonna find out a lot about a lot of these cats yeah. on Saturday. I mean, the whole team is getting ready to be immersed in, uh, you know. Well, I think once you get or once you uh, experience the speed of the game, I mean, that's that's what it's all about, right? It's There's the no speed doubt. of the game. I mean, when you're out there and if you're, if you're, you know, fresh and, you know, haven't really played a lot at this level before, things may be flying at a million miles an hour, but eventually you, hopefully, <laughs> you catch up to that speed, right? And, uh, and, that, and that's what it's all about. There's definitely going to be a difference between the speed in high school yeah. and, the, and the speed in college. There's also going to be a difference in the physicality, typically, mm -hmm. between high school and college. Right. And more big bodies in college than what you have in high school. So ultimately, you use more people in right. college. I mean, I don't know that I've ever started a, a group of players defensively. I know I haven't all year. Right. You're rotating kids in. Kids get laid out for, for, for a week, sprain an ankle, you know, do this, do that. You don't play with the same kids week to week to week. Yeah. You've got to have depth. You've got to have players. So that's why, I want, you know, if my two isn't competing the way I want them to, I get, I mean, I get ornery. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm not happy. Right. I mean, I need my two to fight. I need my two to fight. I need my three to fight to be a two. There you go. And, and, and yeah. so, you know, that's – we're not there yet. You know, we're working on that, but we're not there yet. Two minutes left in the show, Coach. Give me a, uh, give me a couple uh, keys to victory for the Flying Fleet this coming Saturday. I think from a from an offensive perspective, the offense has to be able to. This is cliche, whatever you want to say, but they got to stay ahead of the chains. And ultimately, if they can, then that will open up their package and the things that they want to get involved in. Okay, and I'm not going into a bunch of that stuff right now because right. right now we're an unknown quantity and we need to stay that way. Yeah. Um, but they need to stay ahead of the chains. And if, and if they can do that, then I think that opens up their whole playbook. It opens up all the different things that again they want to get involved in. From a defensive perspective, we have to be able to create negative yardage plays. We have to be able to, to, to have penetration and remove or move the line of scrimmage in a backward or negative right. negative yield, whatever, second, without giving up big plays. Second and 12 is vast, vastly different than second and six. There's no doubt. Yeah. There's no doubt. So we've got, we've got to be proactive in that, and we've got to be able, and we're not going to be huge. You know, so we're gonna we have to do it with movement and things like that. So. Yeah. Well, Coach, best of luck Saturday. I know this is uh, you know a long time coming, but uh, here it is. It's game week, and uh, we're all pulling for you. And I uh, we'll hope to bring home a dub uh, Saturday night. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. And, and there've been so many people just been so kind. Um, we're blessed, and you know, love the people of South Carolina, and uh, just a great, great football state, and um, very pleased with. Uh, the coaches we've got and the work they're doing, and we're just looking forward to getting out there on the field. It's there you been go. a long time coming. All right, that's going to do it for us here tonight from the ground floor of the Belmont Inn. JP's Food and Spirits next Tuesday from 7 to 8 will be at Panther Square Wings and Burgers over on uh, Court Square here in downtown Abbeville. 7 to 8 o'clock every Tuesday night uh, with the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show. Uh, Coach Boyd, again, best of luck and go fleet. Go fleet. Thank you very much. Absolutely. All right, uh, folks, we're going to kick it back to the station, and uh, we will talk to you later. God bless. Go fleet. Tune in next week for another edition of the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show. Coaches Show. With Benji Greason and Coach Chap Boy. Brought to you by the Belmont Inn, Panther Square Burgers and Wings, Irene's of Duress, Ritz and Groceries, and Sports Spray. We'll see you next time.